Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Jack Nicholson image from the movie The Shining. And what I've done, I've actually removed a six foot fence panel from my gate. And we're going to route it onto this and then put it back onto the gate. And I've actually put the number underneath, 49. So we'll route out all the black sections. Imagine it 13 inches by 6 inches across. And the idea is when it's all back in place, as you walk towards the gate, I'm hoping we'll have the illusion of this chap here looking through the fence back at you. So as always for me, we've printed off our image. Originally, I've already drawn it out on the brown section, which is a wood stain on, preservative. I just couldn't see the lines at all. So I've had to, unfortunately, sand down the section behind, but we'll soon stain it back to the original colour. We've popped in our carbon paper underneath, and we've got a pen, and literally just draw around it like so, or drew around it like so, should I say. And there's our image there. So that's enough for us to go at today. As always for me, I'm going to use CNC bits. These come in different degrees. I've got 20s today on this one. You get 15s, 10s, 60s and 30s and so on. It's eBay or Amazon for me. They have a small shaft on them. It's 3.175. So to fit a quarter inch router, you need an adapter, reducer collet. Basically just a liquid tube like that. State of my hands here from the pencil mark. Don't worry about that. And you simply just pop in your CNC bit. That's now got a quarter inch shaft on it. They will fit a CNC. Dremel, should I say. Will fit a Dremel, no problem. If you're using a Dremel router attachment. Which would be fine for smaller projects like this. Anything bigger. You want to invest in a decent router. Once we've done all our lines. Always up to the line for me. Never on the line itself. So I'll come up to that. Up to that. And up to that. Like so. We'll go around all the lined area. The section we are going to remove is all the shaded section so take your time to go around with a pencil and literally just shade that in because you will go away and you'll come back and start removing this section well unfortunately that's the end of your project once we've done all our lines get the general idea down the side of here we'll do this broken wood effect i literally just got a pencil and look went like that it's near enough what i want for my little project once we've done all that we we'll remove the cnc bit and pop on one of these n millimeters these are fantastic for clearing out with we can get some at a decent size I'll try that blue one they have the same size shaft on 3.175 millimeter and so they will fit your adapter reducer collet no problem push it up to that little barrier there on some of them you don't have the barrier but it's the same piece and we'll set it to the same depth i'm going to go for three millimeters on this one i made myself a little gauge just here, I know that's three millimeters, but it's the same thickness as the CNC bit, 3.175 if you want to be particular. So that's the depth of our workout. So we will remove all the shader section at that depth, and then we'll pop in some black paint at the back, maybe a bit of linseed oil, and then we'll finish this off with the original brown stain or whatever it was I put on at the time. I'm sure I've got a bit left in the shed. And then we'll pop it back onto the gate again and see what kind of effect we've got. Okay, we'll just pop this one, the CNC bit, into our router. We'll set it to three millimeters and we'll start routing this one out.
Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way round with those CNC bits, 20 degree on this one. That is literally just the angle of the cut, the degree of the cut on the end of the bit itself. Personally myself, I can't tell a lot between a 15, a 20 and a 30. We've gone all the way around the lines. That's come out no problem whatsoever so far, we say. Now it's going to pop on one of these end milling bits. They're eBay or Amazon again. And they're ideal because they route out the side walls as well as the bottom section. So you'll have a fairly smooth surface, depending on the quality of your wood and stuff. We've picked out a nice small one. We do have, excuse me, we do have some smaller little bits to get into. Obviously, there's bigger bits when you come for the clear out, but I do think it will clear out quite nicely with these little end miller bits. So we just simply just pop it into the same adapter collet. It's got the same size shaft on 3.175. Slide it up to that little barrier. They do come without the barrier, remember, so don't feel the need to look out for those with a barrier on. That's a new thing on the block, is that one? We'll pop it into the router the same. You notice over there. I've removed my little depth gauge, should I say. We'll set it to the same depth as that. And literally just remove all the rest of the shaded out area. Now remember, there is other bits out there. There's profile bits for your lines, liner bits. There's spiral up cuts. There's all fancy things out there. It's just a case of finding what works best for you. And I've certainly got no issues with the little CNC bits and the end milli bits for the price that you pay for them. Okay, let's clear out the remainder of the shaded area. Right, you can see from that, we've cleared it all out with that those end milling bits. We've certainly got no issues with them. So, next stage for me, just a general little tidy up. There's certain areas, I want to try and show you this, but off the length of it, I've got to watch what I'm catching. Unfortunately, I only have a small workshop. So, we just want to use the flexi cable. I'll just tuck that back under the scroll saw. Keep it in place. I want to use a flexi cable like so. I cannot recommend one of these enough. And they're just literally just attached to the end of your Dremel. Get engraving bits. You get a packet of 30 similar to these. They've got round edge, 
different shapes on the end there. And they're ideal, not so much for engraving for me, but for clearing out with. So we get one with a nice flat bottom. And we'll just go in there, and get right inside those little areas here that we didn't get before. And then we'll find one that's got a point on. Nice pointed one like that. And that lets us get right into these more tighter areas. And then we'll give it a little bit of a sanding down. And then be ready for popping in the black paint on the back. We'll do that next. Right, that's enough general tidying up and cleaning up for me. We've gone down those sides there and just rounded it off very slightly. Same on that side as well. So the next stage for me is simply just putting some black paint. I'm going for painter's touch paint today. And we're literally just going to fill all the spaces in with black. And then we'll sand it all down again with a little mouse sander. Just so the face itself and the numbers stand proud. And then we put a bit of boiled linseed oil on there, obviously. That makes an appearance in most of my videos. And then we'll find the original brown that was on the wood itself and redo the side bit. Now I've got to go a bit carefully and I'll try and show you the best I can, but I've got a six foot length piece of wood here. and I've actually got it propped. If I can just turn this slightly just to show you. I've got it wedged under my scroll saw there just to keep it in place. But you get the general idea from that. So we're going to pop the black in and then we'll sand it down and we'll take it from there. But there is a nice split or a crack that runs the full length of this. Only minor and it doesn't bother me personally. So I'm going to use a quite small brush because I don't want any of the black paint to run into those splits and cracks. And we'll basically go up the side like so. It'll be a little slow process and I will go over this twice. Obviously, if you prefer to spray, you can use black spray just as easy. So we'll fill all this in, all in here. It doesn't matter, remember, if we get it on the sides like so, because we are going to sand over the top of it. So I'll throw this black in quickly, and then we'll sand it down, and then we'll be heading towards the finishing line. Right, you can see from that, that's all sanded down nicely. We've had no bleeding whatsoever, and I didn't seal this wood with anything. So there's no bleeding, and it's it's near enough what we want today. Now I'm just going to put on the original brown. Just your, just your standard fence covering, timber care. It's something I've had in my shed for a long time. Now obviously because we have sanded it down, it won't cover maybe as good. You can see from there, it goes on near enough. And we'll let it soak in and probably come back and give it another coat. So we'll pop on the brown first. Going right up to those edges there, look. To run that off like so. And then when we come back, we'll pop on our linseed. Right, that's all our timber care back on. That's gone on nicely, no problem whatsoever. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of boiling seed oil on this. Just to darken it down slightly. I tend to use this on most of my projects. I've certainly got no issue with it. Everybody has their own little preference things. So just in case of dabbing it on, we'll see how it darkens that wood down slightly. Just like that. And we'll do the full piece. Like so, and we also want the numbers doing, so we'll pop a bit on there. Doesn't matter if it goes on the back. In fact, you could do the full piece on the back if you wanted to, just to darken that black down, like so. Just throw it on there, it doesn't matter, does it? Now I'll come back when this is all nicely finished, and we're heading 
towards the finishing line. Okay, that's it. This little project is finished. Now, there's no need to spray any varnish on this. One, I want the panel to look the same as the rest of them. And two, all the three appliances, finishers that we've put on are all for outdoor pieces. If you remember, we used the old fencing timber care. Just your standard stuff that you would purchase from any DIY store. And obviously, a nice bit of boiled linseed oil for his face and the number. And painter's touch, black paint for the background. They're all outdoor pieces, so we don't need any varnish on whatsoever. And that's it. This little project is finished. Just a nice little daft fun project to fill in a couple of hours and something a little bit different. So it's Jack Nicholson from the movie The Shining. I've popped on a house number there. We're going to put this on the back of my gate towards the garden, should I say. And it measures in at 13 inches by 6 inches across. Remember, good old CNC bits with the adapter collet for the lines and end milling bits for the clear out. If you're starting out on router projects, basically that is all I need on 99% of my projects. Nice and easy and nice and cheap from eBay and Amazon. So give it a go. Just enjoy yourself and have fun. That's the main thing. Thank you very much for watching.